join me in the book of Galatians this evening, Galatians chapter number one, Galatians chapter number one this evening. We'll look at just a couple verses here tonight and kind of set the tone for the, the portion of the study we're going to get into. We've been going through uh, for the past several weeks looking at world religions, uh, doing this to, to not only help us have a grasp, uh, a basic understanding of some of these religions, but also uh, to help us be witnesses to those when we encounter them. And thirdly, uh, to help us educate our children as they go off into the college world, as they go out into their lives, uh, they're going to encounter folks uh, that are going to try to lead them astray. And that's what Satan wants to do. Uh, he's going around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may even devour. And our children, the children have, that have grown up in this church, listen, that's who he wants to target. So we need to be aware of that. But we've seen that over the past few weeks, and we've seen some, um, some pretty different religions, I would say, and some that maybe we've never even encountered before. Tonight we're going to look at Mormonism, and it is very prevalent uh, here in our area. Uh, Brother Garrett and I, a year or so ago, two years maybe now, uh, we're out soul winning, <clears throat> and we encountered a, a population, it was a whole neighborhood, of, of Mormons uh, who had moved right in, and they all lived together. And uh, we just need to uh, be aware uh, of kind of what they believe. And like I said before, this is just, we're just scratching the surface. This is just giving us a basic understanding. But uh, this is probably, there's a lot to unpack when we get to a, to a subject like this. So this will probably be two weeks uh, that we'll look at Mormonism. Uh, but we'll, we'll look at it together, and I pray that we come out of it with a little bit of understanding. You probably already have a grasp on it. I'm using a skeleton outline that Pastor Jones used. So you've heard a lot of this stuff, the, the information before, but it's good that we have it again, that we can tuck it away. Galatians chapter number one, <clears throat> verse number six. The word of God, this is Paul writing to the church at Galatia. And they had an issue. They had a problem that had come up and he's helping them uh, with his words, he's uh, going to try to uh, correct uh, some issues that's going on. But notice what he says in verse number six. He says, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you, than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so I so now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that we have re than you have received, let him be accursed. Then he goes forward, he says, For I do now persuade men or God, do I seek to please men? For if I please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. Let's pray together tonight. Father, thank you so much for loving us and being so good to us. And Father, allowing us to meet together tonight. Father, we, we come together tonight, our, our hearts, our minds, uh, may be in different places this evening. Uh, Father, we, as we think about the tragedy of this week and we think about the, just the, the sheer evil uh, that we've witnessed on the news uh, with this elementary school and, Father, with these children being murdered and the teachers. Father, we, we pray for this community. Uh, Father, we pray for, for Rob Elementary. Oh, Father, for the families that are affected. Father, we pray for all the other children who are there who are going to be traumatized. Uh, Father, we, we pray for them and pray for their lives. Father, we pray for our country. Lord, we certainly need you. Uh, Lord, there is a sin issue, and it's a wicked issue. Uh, in our country. And Father, we, we need you. Uh, we need you desperately. But Father, for, for the next few moments, uh, may we direct our attention to your word. And Father, as we think on this subject tonight uh, of Mormonism, uh, Father, would you just guide our hearts. Lord, help us to, to build uh, shelters in our lives. Uh, Lord, help us to educate our children uh, to keep them on the straight and narrow. And Father, trusting in your precious son, Jesus Christ, and he alone. Fathers, we've just read Paul speaking to the church at Galatia. Certainly there was folks there who had come in and tried to persuade and uh, tried to turn the tables. And uh, Father, no doubt in our life today, there'll be folks who will try to turn us away. Uh, but Father, help us to be rooted and grounded in your precious son, Jesus Christ. Lord, give us a, a good time of study. Lord, we love you and thank you. In Jesus' precious name, we humbly pray. Amen. 
Paul here is dealing with Judaizers. And they have come into the church at Galatia and they're trying to turn things back, uh, if you will. They, they've come in and they say, yes, you can accept Christ, but you need something plus. And can I say, we need nothing other than Jesus Christ. There is no Jesus plus. There's certainly not a minus Jesus either. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by him. And praise God for that. Praise God that we have that truth now we're going to read tonight, I'm going to share some notes with you tonight about a group of individuals who have gone completely off on, on this and, and they've missed the mark and millions of people are affected uh, by some of these decisions. But here, uh, back to the text here, we see that Paul's dealing with uh, the perversion of the gospel. Well, I read this quote this week about the gospel and, and we've heard this. We know that the gospel is offensive. It is. The gospel is offensive. The gospel offends our pride. It, it tells us we need a savior and that we cannot save ourselves. It gives us no credit to, it gives no credit to us for our salvation. It is all the work of Jesus. And that's true. Amen. Uh, the gospel offends our wisdom. It, it saves us from something many consider foolish. God becoming a man, dying and humiliating and this disgraceful death on our behalf. It, it offends our wisdom. Thirdly, it offends our knowledge. It tells us to believe in something which goes against scientific knowledge and personal experience. That a dead man, Jesus Christ, rose from the dead in a glorious new body and would never die again. It goes against our, our knowledge. Amen? But it's truth. It's truth. And may we never turn from that. I notice here uh, the Galatians, they, they come in. These Judaizers had come in. And notice with me in verse number 7 which is not another, but there be some that trouble you. That word trouble there, it means to agitate. Uh, kind of like in your washing machine, you have that agitator and it just stirs stuff up. That's what these folks were doing. They'd come in and they were talking all kinds of propaganda and, and trying to turn folks against one another and they were troubling them. But notice he goes further. He says, and would pervert the gospel. That word pervert there, it means this. It means to turn around from. Uh, to, to repel from something, to, to flee from something. That's what they were trying to do. Uh, that's the, the cold, hard facts. They were trying to get folks to turn from the gospel of Jesus Christ, the true gospel. But you know who's the author of that? Satan. Satan's behind it. He doesn't want folks to get saved. He doesn't want folks to live for Christ. Listen, he's happy tonight that at Faith Baptist Church, uh, there's folks that are missing. There's folks that aren't here. Listen, he's happy with that. He's happy that on a Sunday morning, if someone's being convicted by the Holy Spirit, that someone walks out the door lost. That's, that's what pleases him. And we got to be careful of that. We got to understand it's a war that we're in, a spiritual war. But <clears throat> it's been said on this, talking about Paul, as, as Paul's addressing these folks, that somebody may say, well, Paul doesn't seem very loving here as he's speaking about these folks. Where's Paul's love? Uh, this one commentator said, he asked for a double curse on people, uh, people who had spread false, who had spread the false gospel. He didn't just ask God to curse the message, but he said to curse the people who spread the message. So where is Paul's love? This commentator said, Paul's love was for the souls in danger of hell. That's where Paul's love was. If the gospel is false and not another good news at all. Uh, it, then it can't save anyone that is lost. Paul looked at this false, perverted gospel that these Judaizers were, were propagating as a rescue ship that's sinking. And friend, can I tell you tonight, as we've studied these world religions, there's a lot of rescue ships that are sinking. And folks are, are fleeing to these rescue ships, but it's going to get them nowhere. There's only one rescue ship that's worthy of being even called a rescue ship. That is Jesus Christ and his gospel. So we ought to be cautious about allowing folks to propagate this. And this is the whole drive. This is what Paul's saying. Now, that brings us to our subject tonight, the Mormons. We're going to look tonight, as I said, it's going to be a two-part. Tonight's really just going to be the history and kind of where, where they've come from and how they got to where they are. Next week, we're going to look at, Lord willing, kind of how they believe and kind of what the Bible says. And, and we'll look at some biblical points next week. But where did this cult originate from? It all traced back to a man by the name of Joseph Smith. Joseph Smith. He was born December 23rd, 1805 in Vermont. 
And at 12 years old, his family moved to Palmyra, New York. Uh, so they made that journey. I suppose in those days that was common, maybe moved for work or some other way. Uh, but his father, uh, he, was a, he was a different individual. His father was a treasure hunter. So he wanted to go out into the woods and find treasures, I, I suppose. And he, that's just his personality. He was a, a treasure hunter, uh, hunting for these uh, buried treasure. Oftentimes it was imaginary buried, buried treasure. I remember when I was a, a child and you'd watch little television shows about pirates and things. I thought buried treasure was everywhere. And I suppose that's what uh, Joseph's dad, that's, that's the kind of mindset he had. His mother, she was uh, extremely religious, um, but it was mystical. Uh, she was very mystical in her religious views, very superstitious. Uh, when they moved to New York, most of the family, uh, he had 10, he was uh, the fourth of 10. So most of his brothers and sisters and, and the family that moved and, and moved to New York joined the Presbyterian church. But Joseph didn't. Here's why he didn't. He said he looked at the, the conflict that was in the Presbyterian church. He looked at the conflicts in the Baptist churches. He looked at the conflict in the Methodist churches. And he said in his heart, he thought they were all wrong because they were conflicting. They were having trouble. So he decided that he wasn't going to join the denomination at all. In his mind, all denominations were wrong. 1820, uh, he had a, a vision, a supposed vision, we'll call it that, an alleged vision in which God the Father and Christ materialized and spoke to him. They told him of a, the restoration of real Christianity and that it was needful and he was the one pointed to bring in this new dispensation. Now, isn't it amazing uh, that here he is, he, he sees problems with all the denominations and now in his mind, God's going to speak to him and tell him he has all the answers and that he's going to lead the church in this new dispensation and that comes directly from one of their main writings, the Pearl of a Great Price. It's right there, it says that. In that same year of 1820, Smith had a second vision, an alleged second vision, that singled him out as the Lord's anointed prophet for this age. At this time, an angel named Moroni appeared by his bedside and repeated this commission to him three times. Now, we open with Galatians chapter number one. You remember what it said, what Paul told the Galatians? He, he told them, listen, whether an angel comes or some other man comes, listen, and they give you a gospel other than what you've preached, they're cursed. And here, this man, he, he has these visions. Now, I, I personally think these were visions that were sent to him by, by Satan. He's, he's seeing all these wild things. Whether he really even seen them or not, it was not a work of God. The Bible's clear on that. The Bible's not going to be contrary uh, to itself. And here we see that, that Paul told the Galatians, listen, it's sealed. There, there's nothing that can be added to, God, to the gospel message. So this is a classic example of a man not walking with God and being fooled by Satan. He, he had said, listen, there, there's all these problems in the church. I'm going to go my own way. And he went his own way. And he's carried a multitude with him. A multitude. In 1827, Smith uh, was supposedly directed by this angel Moroni to unearth a set of golden plates from a hill called Camorra near New York. Uh, his father was a treasure hunter. Remember that, that portion. So he was a treasure hunter by, by heart. He learned some things from his dad. And he allegedly found these plates that were written in uh, Egyptian hieroglyphics. And Moroni provided him with special spectacles that just he could look at these plates and determine what it said. Now, isn't that convenient, right? I mean, it, it's convenient that he finds them in New York. He finds them close to his home. It's written in hieroglyphics that nobody else can understand. And this angel gives him the spectacles that he can read. And that's what he begins to write his gospel uh, with. Well, during the years of 1827 to 1829, Smith worked with Oliver Cowdery. And they supposedly translated these golden plates. And on May 15th, 1829, John the Baptist supposedly appeared and bestowed the Arianic priesthood to these two men. Again, we can go back to Galatians chapter number one and prove this false, that this didn't happen. Uh, but in 1829, he completed his work. And this is where we get the Book of Mormon. Uh, this is the book that this religious group follows. 
It come from hieroglyphic plates with special spectacles. And I know it sounds so far-fetched, but I'm telling you, folks have bought into this. They, they truly, listen, they, they live for this. This is their, their religion. And, and it's a shame. And this is, again, we have spoke about a lot of religions in this study that's more of a, a culture uh, than a creed or more of a creed than a culture and back and forth. And I'm telling you, if somebody born into this, boy, oh boy, it's, it's tough. It's tough. But the gospel is powerful. Amen. The gospel is powerful. The true gospel. Uh, well, what did the Book of Mormon contain? It contained a history of two civilizations that came to the American continent. Uh, that, see, our, our Bible doesn't mention America. It's contrary to popular belief. America is not in the good King James Bible. Now, there's, there's messages for us. There's lessons for us, but we're not mentioned. We're not mentioned in end times. We're, we're not there. But here, uh, the Book of Mormon, it's all about America. It's, it's all about America. Uh, they, they speak about the, the first civilization that's mentioned in this Book of Mormon is the, uh, a civilization that came from the Tower of Babel. And they said that they settled in Central America. These were called the Jaredites because of their corruption. Their civiliz civilization was destroyed. A second group of people supposedly left Jerusalem at 600 B.C. Uh, before the Babylonian captivity and they settled in Peru. And that's what they propagate in the Book of Mormon. The leader was a Jew by the name of Nephi. Uh, this civilization was divided into two groups called the Nephites and the Lamanites, which became the American Indians. That's what they propagate, uh, that that's how we uh, have the native culture today is from these groups uh, that migrated from Israel. The history uh, written supposed by the prophet Mormon was then discovered some 1,400 years later at this same site by Joseph Smith. Again, another convenient find uh, from Mr. Smith. Uh, Smith allegedly received three other sets of plates, the plates of Nephi, the plates of Ether, and the plates of Laban. 1833, Smith and his followers moved to Kirkland, Ohio, and within six years made some 1,600 converts. 1,600 converts. I don't know about you, but it's difficult to go out and share the gospel message today and have folks actually want to engage you and, and listen to you. I, I can't imagine going out and telling the story that, hey, I found this plate and I have these glasses and 1,600 converts in a short amount of time. When you and I, we, listen, we have the truth that we're sharing. Folks don't want to hear the truth anymore. Folks didn't want to hear the truth in that day. They were looking for something, and it was opposite of truth, just like in Paul's day with the Galatians. It all ties together. We, we see this picture unfolding. Between the years 1831 and 1844, uh, the prophet Smith, he supposedly uh, received some 135 revelations from God. And one was to make Nauvoo the new headquarters. This is Nauvoo, Illinois and to lead his followers to an unprecedented polygamy as part of this new religion. Smith uh, took on 49 wives uh, during this time. Uh, so he had all these revelations. You've got to be careful when someone tells you that they're having revelations. The Bible is sealed. Uh, anything else, listen, is, is false. Uh, we see that right there in the book of Galatians. And we've got to be careful. We've got to be careful who we involve ourselves with that, that claim that they have uh, these revelations. Listen, I'm telling you, it's a slippery slope uh, when we start engaging this. In 1842, uh, the, the newspaper there, the Nauvoo Expositor, uh, exposed the cult. And then uh, Smith and his brother, uh, they had, were involved in this polygamous activity, this multiple wives, this moral practices, and they retaliated by wrecking the print shop. They said, you know what, we're just going to get you, we're just going to destroy the newspaper. Uh, and, and get it out of business. Well, they were arrested and they were hauled off to jail and a mob of 200 people came after them and uh, they murdered them uh, in their jail cells. Now, the, the Mormon beliefs and their, their writings hold to the fact that Smith went down fighting. They say that he had a gun and he was firing off shots as they came into the jail and he is held as their martyr, Smith is. He's held as their martyr. So what, what does this cult, we've seen some of the background. 
we've seen some of the areas of their poor uh, decision making, I'll call it that. But here's some other things we can look at. The first of all, the, the whole book of Revelations, which Joseph Smith and his followers have received, are extra biblical. There's no doubt about that. We, we can look at that and see. And they have proven to be inaccurate and contrary to what the Bible teaches. The character of Joseph Smith is enough to dismiss anything he would claim to have been revealed from God. And in fact, 62 residents in New York signed a petition to show how vile a person he was. They, they all signed a petition against him. One of Smith's own followers named Sidney Rigdon denounced Smith's character in a salt sermon dealing with salt losing its saving and applying it to Smith's conduct and his character. Uh, we see how he became involved in polygamy and, and adopting all these wives and, and this such. And it's just, it's terrible that this man was drawing folks to him in this false religion, this false gospel. Well, this, uh, after his death, and, and we'll probably close it down here in just a second, but we'll get to this next point. After uh, Smith's death, uh, Brigham Young, you've probably heard that name. You've probably heard it in the last study we went through. There's a, there's a university named after him. He took over the movement. And he led them from Illinois to where they are pro prominent now in Salt Lake City, Utah. So he moved them to this new location in 1847. And Young claimed, Brigham Young claimed infallible prophetic succession and his words became law in the whole state of Utah. We can go back to Galatians chapter number one and see that, listen, he's claiming these things just like Joseph Smith did. And we can see the decay and the decline uh, of this event. Young, he went on to marry 70 wives. He fathered 58 children. Uh, he was the prophet and president of the Mormon church until his death in 1877. There's one right up near his death. Uh, there was a, a write-up about him from one of his followers. A man was arrested for a, a, just, a, just a brutal murder of over 100 people, 150 non-Mormon immigrants. And this guy, he's charged with it. His name was John D. Lee. And he was charged with this murder. They called it in that day the Mountain Meadows Massacre. And there's 150 non-Mormons who were coming through Utah. And they were murdered. Well, on his deathbed, right before they executed him, this man had, had made a statement. And he confessed that he acted upon the orders of Brigham Young. That's what he said. And that boy, I tell you, that just... It just pulls at your heart uh, to hear these things and see that there are folks who are in this today who've bought into this religious system. Well, the cult grew rapidly out of its beliefs and practices of polygamy. 1831, God supposedly re revealed, uh, as we've already mentioned, that Joseph Smith, uh, he wanted to revive and reinstitute plural marriages. That, that was what he said. He wanted to revive and reinstitute. Can I say that God never instituted plural marriages. Man did. God, God in his plan, he never instituted plural marriages. Genesis 2.18 clears that up. Over in the book of Ephesians, and you can look it up, chapter number 5, verse number 31, For this call shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife, those are singular, and they, and they too shall be one flesh. The biblical uh, account of marriage is one man and one woman. So he wasn't reinstituting anything of God. And this became a draw for this group polygamy. It, uh, Smith, he called it the celestial marriage. That's what he propagated it as. But all the leaders throughout their history uh, did this. The Mormon church, it, it has spread drastically, drastically over the years. In 1964, they had uh, 15,000 missionaries and had, we're seeing 25,000 conversions a year. And it was estimated that in 1964, they had 2 million uh, converts, believers, following this system. And you think about back just less than 100 years earlier, they had 1,500. Now today, 2021, at the end of 2021, the church has 35,000 congregations and the membership of 16 million worldwide. It's growing. It's growing by the day. Uh, every convert, every um, uh, uh, young boy is required two years of service 
to go out and be a missionary. We've encountered them. I don't know whether you've had one knock on your door or you've encountered them in the city. They ride the bicycle. I mean, they have a look. They have a distinct look. But they have given their lives to service. And boy, oh boy, I tell you, in the, in the grand scheme of things, sometimes they put us to shame on that aspect. But they're following a false gospel propagated by a man who's having visions that was a work of the devil. So that's just a basic uh, look at, at what they believe and kind of where they got to where they are today. Now, next week, Lord willing, we'll look at kind of how they believe and kind of how we can see biblically where it's wrong. We've already seen the polygamy's wrong. We've seen the, the visions are wrong. But next week, we'll get into the meat and potatoes, if you will, of their belief system. But I, I pray it's just a help to us as we go through some of these things. Well, let's turn, if you will, to your prayer bulletin. Does anyone need one tonight? Anyone at all? Prayer bulletin. All right, yes, we've got a couple here. Brother Shane's on the way. Brother Shane, I appreciate you being back there, brother. I really, really do. Uh, sometimes we, we don't think uh, the folks who do that job enough. And it's wonderful to know that there's someone watching for us, watching for our safety, and I'm thankful for you, brother. Amen. Well, while he's passing those, does anyone have a praise to report tonight? Anyone at all? All right. All right, well, let's be praying for our country. Let's pray for our president, leaders, police, military, COVID-19, uh, the virus that's impacting folks, the youth of America. Pray for the abortion issue. And let's pray for that Rob Elementary uh, there in Texas. Pray for those families. I can't imagine uh, what those moms and dads are going through, what the, the other parents of that school, uh, those children that witnessed it, just a terrible, just a despicable situation that these young people had to go through. But let's pray for all those affected. And uh, I mean, it sent ripples uh, even as far. Uh, I seen Stokes County today uh, was uh, upping security in Rockingham County. Uh, it's a good thing that we up security, but it, it draws tension into the minds of our children. Uh, so we need to pray for all the children across the United States that are having to endure this right now. Let's be in prayer for our ministries here at our church, the upcoming VBS. Let's pray for our families and friends that are lost. Pray for the nation of Israel. Let's pray for the Ukraine and the homeless in our area. Pray for our missionaries. I spoke to Pastor Jones uh, earlier this week, and he said to tell the church hello. Uh, he said that they're doing well and, and doing great, but he wanted me to, to just remind everybody that he cares for you and loves you. So uh, what a blessing. Hospital surgeries and tests. We're praying for John Christie, Donald Fletcher, Marcus Ray, Jackson Ross, Leon Puckett, Colin Williams, John Kelly, the Marion Infants, Harold Collins, James Lambert, Bobby Joe Young, Gary Gardner, Brother Bobby Pettit. It was, it was wonderful to hear that his procedure went well and he's healing up. So praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. He said, thank everyone for your prayers. Brother Curtis, it's good to see you here tonight. I'm telling you, Brother Curtis, you're tough. I'm telling you. You look like you got you fought a, a wildcat or something, but amen. 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 Let's continue to pray for you, brother, and, and we'll be there for you. And Nathaniel Stevenson, Penny Coble, Sue Hamilton, Doris Ashby, Gary Lawson, Donnie Rogers, Peggy Sechrist, Dora Edwards, Austin Armstrong, Sister Audrey's going to have surgery on July the 13th. Sister Bobby has a procedure this Friday, so let's be in prayer for her. Daryl Stollard. Coy Tucker, this is a four-week-old uh, that contracted COVID. Uh, was in ICU on the ventilator. Uh, Sister Jeannie, have you heard any updates? Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So some improvement there with this uh, Coy Tucker. Have any other updates to the this section tonight? Sister Doris? Amen. 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 He's had excellent care, Miss Doris. Excellent care. 
Amen. I, Nicole, I wish Nicole could say that one day. She has a terrible patient when I'm sick. Amen. Anyone else? Brother uh, Randy. Sure. Yes, sir. Hunter Alley. My, my. We will certainly be praying for Hunter Alley and going to Duke for a tumor removal. Any others? Additions. All right. Uh, health section, praying for Sister Livy, Faye Porter, Joey Pettit, Salem Williams, Gary Venable, Eugene Stewart, Jenny Barney, Silas Cook, Tamara Dotson, Jack Phillips, Tommy Collins, Terry Fulp, Cindy Green, Jeannie Barton, Casey Yvette, Shelby Forrest, Casey Campbell, Tanya Smith, Gail Bowden, John Whitaker, Ricky Moser, James Lambeth, Lou Ann Gibbons, Miss Wilson, Steph Rogers, Joanne Lawson, Leona Culler, Kayla White, Joe Fulp, Doris Lawson, Roger Bullins, Bill Turner, Randy Pettit, Barbara Martin, David Eldridge, Pastor O'Neill, Sally Lawson, Angela Mitz, Al March, Robert Lucas, Joanne Lucas, Cheryl Hohn, Pam Carpinko, Tommy Watts, Ann Banks, Sister Elaine Venable, Sister Jetty Fry, Cindy Hodges, and Brother Garrett Van Ring Sr. Have any additions or updates to this section? Brother Garrett Jr. Amen. David Eldridge can remove. The second row, the, the very bottom one. Yes, ma'am. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. That is wonderful. Wonderful. Praise the Lord. Sister Rebecca. Amen. Amen. That's wonderful. Brother Shane. Mm. I got you, brother. Mr. Mears Gregory, is that what you said? Gregory. Anyone else on this section? Adam McCoy. Okay, on this section here. All righty. Oh, my. All right, anyone else? Sister Judy? Yes, ma'am. Certainly add Brenda Mabe and Edda McCoy. Anyone at Sister Stephanie? Wow. Cam the Shield. All right. Multiple procedures. How old did you say the child was? Three. Okay. Anyone else on this section? All right. We're expectant mothers praying for Lupe Reyes, Courtney Vaden, Nicole Purdue, <clears throat> Tabitha Snow, Abigail Hutchins under the COVID-19. We're praying for John Nelson, praying for the Barton family. Uh, Bunny Purdue, if you'd add Bunny Purdue, Sister Bunny Purdue. Sister Shannon Purdue and Bible Baptist Church. If you could add those, that, that church has been impacted by the virus. Take John off. Amen, brother. All right. Anyone else on the front side? All right. Long term issues praying for Eva Leroy, uh, Carol Wagner. I would ask you to especially pray for Sister Carol. Uh, during this time, I spoke with her son last weekend, and Sister Carol's uh, going through just a very tough time, uh, both emotionally and physically as well. So, a card, a phone call would probably uh, do her a, a lot of good. I know that 
we tried to reach out to her for it seemed like two weeks or so and couldn't get through. There was a phone issue that has been resolved. Uh, so she does have the same phone number and I was able to speak with her. So uh, what a blessing that is. But we could really, uh, we ought to shower her with prayers and then we could uh, just be a comfort to her in a, a care with a phone call or a, a car. Uh, can you pray for Brother Paul Hooker, uh, Sister Lynette Robbins, Amber Rogers, Helen Brock, Leola Reed, Savannah Reniger, Steve, Alonzo Spence, Bill Abbott, Cliff Williams, Norman Fry, Brantley Couch, Ernest Pretty, Diane Gibson, Teresa Tucker, Jill Tucker, Edith Collins, Roland Chilton, I'm Jean Chilton, Brother Shane, Anita Nemec, Larry Wood, Donnie Wilmoth, Philip Reeling, Jane Clark, Stevie White, Shirley Croson, Judy May, Phyllis Collins, Michael Bunn, Kevin Clark, Kenny Stone, Jesse Stone, Brittany Moser, John Racy, Dr. Billy Martin, Kimbrey, Penny Pettit, Dean Brinkley, Richard Lanham, Brother Ted Harrison, Miss Johnson, T.B. Roth, Jerry, Le Jerry Jones, Danny Sisk, Bonnie Buckner, Bunny Purdue, Ronald Pat, Miss Pilar, Officer Hoyle, Kevin Lynch, Mike Marshall, Lexi Martin, Mitchell Wright, Sister Elizabeth Purdue, Colin Ruffley, Eddie Reniger, Ruth Love, Pastor Hall, Tammy Simon, Wanda Wood, D. Armstrong, Silas Miller, Travis Kincaid, Ray Walker, Mark Harden, Jessica Messer, Harley, Denise Bennett, Jennifer DiGiacomo, Artist Brew Baker, Brittany Hall, Jerry Lawson, Sabrina Harrison, Sherry Miller, Amy Stewart, Sandra Reed, Doris Conaway, Brenda Cassidy, Danny Gordon, Camp Ross, David Clodfelter, Stephanie Young, Tammy Mickey, Rhonda Kinsey, Donnie Ray Tolson, Kevin Rogers, Billy Fox, Sister Diane Rogers, and Susie Margie East. Have any updates on this section or additions or subtractions? All right. Cancer section, praying for Tommy Turpin, Emily Young, Robin Dickens, William Avery, Daryl Brinkley, Paul Crotz, Karen Holt, Sandy Griffin, Paula Grabs, Gary Gardner, Eddie Davis, Sue Covington, Robin Wilson, Mears Moser, Glenda Barber, Tanya Smith, Wanda Cree, Debbie Martin, Barbara Shelton, John Speaks, Harold Collins, Nathan Rhodes, Connie Jeremias, Donna Gordy, Tammy Cecil, Kathy Francis, Sandra Pruitt, Raymond Fields, Jeffrey Smith, Emily Parker, Tom Morris, Sandra Weaver, Curtis Rabine, Bobby Marshall, Billy McClure, Andrew Johnson, Dwight Tuttle, Sheila Roberts, Howard McNeely, Tracy Maxwell, Joanne Francis, Amber Bryant, Sheila Rogers, William Weiss, Nathaniel Berge, Lawrence Voss, Donna Chun's husband, and Joshua Church. Have any updates on the cancer section tonight? Sister Rebecca? Sure. I see. Certainly will. Anyone else under the cancer section tonight? Uh, Sister uh, Ruby? I see. Barbara Shelton family. We'll certainly be praying for her family. Sister Doris? Sister Bobby. I'm sorry, brother. I missed you. All right. Certainly will. Billy McClure, we can take off. Sister Bobby. Okay. Diane Wilson. All right. Any other updates? Cancer section? Okay. <clears throat> bereavement, we're praying for the Barbara Shelton family. Any other bereavements uh, this week other than, of course, the school there in, in Texas? We need to be praying for those families. 
anyone local though. All right. A travel, let's pray for Elizabeth Purdue. She's going to be traveling uh, this weekend. And then continue to pray for Brother Junior Hooker on the mission trip that the Lord would just give him traveling mercies there and see fruit for his labor. Additional requests for praying for Robbie, the Hall family, Ethan Bullins, Linda, the Scott family, the Lineback family, Eli, Nicole Purdue, the Culler family, Michael Stone, Taylor Schuler, Tanner Dowd, the Love family, and the Murphy family. All right. Daryl. The, the whole, all of them. All right. We will certainly play for the Rogers family. Is there a way? All right. Unspoken request tonight on this side of the church. Sister Diane. Brother Jimmy. Brother Bobby. Sister Doris. Brother Robert. And on this side of the church tonight, Sister Maddie. Sister Rebecca. Sister Sterling. Brother Isaac. Brother Garrett Jr. Sister Stephanie. Sister Bobby. Garrett, or brother Garrett Sr. Brother Garrett Sr. And Brother Shane. Amen. Brother, you're the only one that I can get away with that with, maybe. You know, I know you're going to give me a hard time about it. <laughs> Amen. Well, let's be prayer warriors uh, this week, praying for all those needs. Uh, there are certainly many. But it's wonderful to see answered prayers tonight as, as names come off uh, off of our list. And God is still answering, answering prayers. So praise the Lord for that. Well, I ask you to stand and we'll be dismissed. We'd like to thank you for joining us today on our live stream service. We pray that you are encouraged, that you are blessed, and that you are challenged by God's Word. If we can be of any assistance to you, please feel free to reach us at our email below. We pray that you have a wonderful day and God bless.